Good to go, John. Thank you. Good evening, brothers. My name is John Ziza. I'm the chairman of the Housing Advisory Committee. I'm here to host uh, this town hall event dealing with Pipe Burst Pro. I'd like to introduce Roger Kincaid of Pipe Burst Pro to uh, describe and educate you all on the product. And after his presentation, I will open the floor for questions and answers. Roger, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you, John. Appreciate you giving us the opportunity to present tonight. Uh, welcome, guys. I uh, just wanted to say I uh, appreciate you being here and learning about our product. We feel like we have a solution to what goes on in a lot of fraternity and sorority houses, which is uh, water leaks and all the damages that are caused by water leaks. Our system is a smart system, which allows uh, you as a house member or anyone that you designate as your manager uh, to be able to monitor the system through a dashboard. Um, it can be done through email, it can be done through text messages or phone calls. So there's three ways that you can be notified of different events. But what we like to do is try to give you some sort of detection first and then protection uh, secondly. So um, uh, if you could go ahead and, and do the slide up, Dio. So we're, we're the one complete online solution. Everything we do is online. Um, you, can, you can do it remote or you can do it on property. So a lot of our customers have uh, management companies that monitor the properties for, for the houses. So you can monitor and control your water anywhere. You can get remote modifications and you don't even have to be in the same country for it to happen as long as you have some type of signal, whether it be via uh, internet or via um, text message or phone call. Next slide, Dio. So a little bit about us. Um, our, our parent company, manufacturing company is called Greenfield Direct. They are located in Nebraska and we represent their product and sell, sell the product as Pipe Burst Pro. Uh, they are a company that has been in business for a long time that started as a actuated valve company for the agricultural industry. So you'll see some of those logos, John Deere, Rosenbauer and Toro that are pretty proud logos and companies that represent a lot of the ag industries. So that's kind of how we got started. They figured out they could do more with their actuated valves than just put it on farm equipment and create a solution for a problem that's, that's happening all over the world. Next slide, Dio. So our system is it's fairly simple. It sounds complicated, but it's not. Uh, if you look at the bottom right, that's a hub. That is what would be considered the brain of our system. So we would mount that uh, in a IT closet, in a basement, somewhere that's out of the way that uh, for regular traffic throughout, um, you would not have someone that would be going in and, and, and trying to say, okay, what's this light doing? Why is it blinking green? What's it, you know, what's it doing? So we like to put them in a IT closet. A lot of the fraternity houses, they're located close to wherever the main water source is coming into the house. If there's a basement, we can, we can mount it in the basement, okay? So then the, the hub controls the entire system. What, what all we do is we recommend you have a valve, which is an actuated valve. You see it on the, on the far left there, and they come in sizes from three quarter inch up to 12 inch. We would match that up with your water line, which is your main water line coming into your, your house. And then we would also recommend you get a flow meter. So the flow meter attaches in line uh, between the, the, the valve and the line that's coming in. And what the flow meter does is it detects the flow of water through the system. So you're in control of those settings. We can recommend and, and you will have a study done from the moment you plug it in, from the moment it comes online that gives you data of what your minimum and your maximum uh, water usage is. So what happens is when that flow meter goes below the min or above the max, it sends a signal. The signal goes to the relay, which you'll see on the right-hand side. The relay goes to the hub, and then the hub sends a signal to the valve, and it shuts the water off to the house. So basically what, what we're detecting is we're detecting abnormal flow into your system. 
Now, if you're on a campus when you're on Christmas break uh, and there's not a lot of people in the house, what would happen, those mins and max would change. You also have a home and away mode where when you're on those breaks, you can turn it to an away mode and it's gonna be a lot less volume of water coming through there. That way the event is gonna trigger when no one's in the house to shut the water off. And what it does when the water shuts off, it actually allows someone to come in and go, okay, where's the leak at? And you don't have to worry about the water just continuously running and running and running until someone investigates. So that's, that's basically the system in a nutshell. If you go to the next, next slide, Dio. So that kind of tells you here how it works, a little bit about what I was explaining. It goes to the hub and you'll see on the right-hand side, you have the valve, you have the relay and you have the flow meter. Um, on the left-hand side, we also have water and temperature sensors and wired sensors that plug in. A lot of our fraternity and sororities do not use the sensors because they could get missing in a fraternity house or a sorority house. If we put them down at the toilet or we put them down underneath the sink or we put them down somewhere, we won't, if, if we do that, what our recommendation would be that it would be somewhere where it wasn't seen like in maybe an HVAC closet um, or underneath the kitchen cabinet. Um, so you, you want to be able to use those if you can. Uh, most of our sorority and fraternities do not use the sensors because they have found in the past that they do get gone, they do get missing. So, um, but you know, you can't you can use those. That's an add-on um, that uh, that we offer. So, go to the next slide, Dio. Okay, um, where your complete automatic protection. Um, like I said, the sensors check in with a VIP four times a day if you have the sensors. Um, the, the, the VIP, uh, it does a monthly valve check, which is interesting, depending on where you're located in the country. A lot of, lot of people have soft water and sediment settles into the pipes. So what happens when you have sediment settle into the pipes, you could, you could get corrosion in the pipes. You could get a lot of bad stuff that goes when it settles in the pipes. So we do a monthly valve check. The system does. What it does, it makes sure that it's open then it gets to the closed position and then it opens back up to allow that valve to exercise. And it also moves all the sediment and all the collection through the pipes. Um, so we, we do that um, as part of the system and that could be set up at a, at a time of your choosing. You obviously wouldn't want to do it, you know, when, when everybody was in the house using showers and cooking food and all that. So most of the time they're done, you know, three o'clock in the morning, something like that but that's something that could be coordinated and uh, customized for your property. Um, Dio, go ahead and change. Um, we also have a, uh, a checklist that we provide. Uh, the house director or whoever is in charge of your maintenance would choose the plumber to do the install. And then obviously we would be uh, in touch at that process to answer any questions. We have checklists, we have how to's, um, like I said, the system seems a little complicated, but it's, it's really not, especially for a plumber that, that has experience putting in valves and, and working on plumbing lines. Dio, go to the next slide, please. Uh, this shows you a little bit about what the dashboard looks like. Um, and this is through ionleaks.com. And your house would be set up on ionleaks.com with a designee of your choice. And then you would add people that you wanted to be notified based on who uh, was at the house most or who was in charge or in, in so, some type of supervisory capacity. But as you can see on the dashboard, they're labeled. Uh, these are actually um, showing uh, water and temperature sensors. They label them. We, we are able to customize first floor bathroom sink. We're able to do main house valve. We're able to do kitchen sink. We can pretty much give any description uh, that's available. And what that allows you to do, if you do have a leak or you do have an event, it's going to guide you right to where that event happened. Okay, Dio, go ahead. Um, like I was telling you, you have data that accumulates from day one when you first come in. These reports are available online through your Ion Leaks account. And it, as you can see, it will show you water frequency through the, through the flow meter. 
okay? And what it does, it protects you from burst pipes or hidden leaks that are behind the wall that you wouldn't know about until they came through the wall. So you can get this in-depth interactive graph at any time by going onto your system. Probably will never use it ever. It's good to have in case um, you ever need to present it to an insurance company. Very important. They like to see this kind of stuff because it shows that your property is protected. Okay, Dio, go ahead. This is just another little uh, feature on ion links. You can see, I, I said there's a water and temperature sensor. You can set the temperature for whatever temperature you want it to, and it will alert you when it drops below that temperature. This is important in some of the colder states where people might go on Christmas break, leave a window open, and it would alert someone that, uh-oh, we have a 30-something degree temp inside the house, which is not good because you could have frozen pipes. You could have things that uh, you know are, are connected to water lines that could have problems with that. So, Dio, go ahead. Again, okay, and then this is just showing you a flow meter data analysis. It's kind of giving you um, some of the information that you would get when you looked on the dashboard. Most of you would never ever use it, but it's there in case you need it. And if you ever uh, need explanation on this, we have a hundred number where we have tech support where you can call our factory and we, we have technicians that can walk you through any of the reports that the system will generate. Okay, Dio. So our warranty, we have a seven-year warranty, a uh, two-year comprehensive warranty and a seven-year limited warranty on the actuator. Um, ne I, I've never had to replace anything in my time. We've been in business for 12 years. I've been with the company for a little over a year. Um, like I said, we're proud of our product. Um, we rep, we're represented all over uh, the United States and even outside the continental United States. So, um, Dio, go ahead. That's the last slide. I think that's the last slide. So, John, I know I covered a lot of ground there. Um, probably uh, talked to a lot of language that nobody really understood, but it's kind of an introductory uh, forum for our, our product. So if there's anyone there that would like to ask questions or has any comments or anything, we'd be more than happy to field those questions for you. Can I start with a, with a question? Sure. Um, if, if a house corporation has an interest in the product, yes. who do they speak with? How do they, rate, how do they contact you? Um, you would contact me. You have, you have my information, John, because you and I mm -hmm. have corresponded um, through email. Um, my email address has all of my information. And if you have a centralized uh, email that you want to send a blanket email out, you can do that with my information. I can create an email and send it out to a list, whatever you want to do. But I am the, uh, I'm the sales rep for, the, for this, this system through the, the sorority and fraternity houses. Um, they've charged me with that, which has been, it's been good for me so far. And uh, I've enjoyed it. But uh, yeah, I am, I am the contact. I would be the one. And what we would do, we would we'd ask you some questions, obvious about the house. We would do a proposal for you that would give you an in-depth, okay, here's, here's the component parts um, and here's what it would cost. And we'd give you that. And, and we can turn that around fairly quickly for you. Gotcha. And just a price range, like an eight to 12,000 square foot house. What might, what might the device for that well, size hold, house hold on one second. Let me, let me, let me go back here and I can pull something up for you right here. I can tell you one that we just sold. Where am I? Okay. I got, I got a fraternity house at the university of Washington and I will tell you their system is, is, is pretty big. I mean, they got a three inch, they got a three inch water line. So you're talking about a hub, a relay, a valve, and then a flow meter. And with, with shipping tax and everything, it was $4,900. Okay. And, and so if I could add to that, um, some practical things that house corporations need to take into consideration. Um, you didn't say it specifically, but I believe you need a master plumber to install the device. Yes, certified so, certified plumber, and I'm sure right. most most of your houses and properties have some sort of contract or maintenance contract with a plumbing contractor. 
Right, and my understanding is it takes about an hour or two hours for that installation to occur. Right. Now, you will need to know that when you choose to have it installed, you'll have a water interruption because they're going to be they're going to be cutting into the line to install the valve. They're also going to be cutting in the line to install the flow meter. So you will be without water for that period of time that they are working. So you need to be conscious of that sure. w when you would have that done. In addition, they'll need to have power supply close by because you have to plug the unit in. That's right. And and does that have to be um, a water sensitive outlet? Does it? It, it does not. Uh, okay. we, just, we just need standard power. We also prefer to have an internet connection, but we can also right. do a USB connection. Um, okay. Uh, you know, but for reliability, we would like to do uh, internet connection. Our system doesn't actually operate off of Wi Fi. We operate off of a technology called LoRaWAN. It is a long range wide area network. Um, it kind of flies under the radar of Wi-Fi. It doesn't, it doesn't have any interference with cell phones. It doesn't have any interference with the old, uh, you know, cordless phone technology. Uh, so it's kind of its own bandwidth. So, um, but, but we, uh, we, we like to be plugged into the internet. Um, and so that's, that's kind of our requirements, either a USB or plugged into the internet. And also we would need electricity to plug in that. And then we have a harness that actually goes from the valve and for the relay, and those will also be plugged in, in line. So how many outlets total and what, what level of power supply it's, would it's, be required? It's just a regular 120 volt um, standard uh, household usage. It doesn't, it doesn't pull a lot of amps. There's nothing crazy about our system. Um, it, this system is actually uh, a plug and play for a residential operation. Um, mm -hmm. So, and the, and the hub that we sell to the sorority and the fraternity houses are um, residential hubs. And what I mean by that is it, it's limited to two zones and 20 devices. Okay. So if you wanted to increase that, you'd have to go to the commercial hub, which has 26 zones and a hundred device capability. But in a fraternity house, you would, you would never, you'd never go more than that. Um, sure. But uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty, it's pretty easy to install. Um, it, it looks a little bit, um, you know, scary at first, but it, it's, our customer service is excellent. I've had, I've had novices, um, order this system and call our customer service and get a little tutorial and they're, they're able to put it in real easy. So it's, you know, don't, don't tell anybody it's easy because we, we, we want to, we want them to think it's a little more complicated. And coming back to the electrical question. Yes. Two gang or four gang would that would be required Ooh, to support that? It, it's see, I think you could get by with a two gang. Um, four gang is, you know, that's optional if you have it. Um, you know, a lot of, a lot of these fraternity houses that we have seen, they're set up somewhere around in the basement or in an IT closet where, you know, it works. The, the hub does not have to be located where the valve and the relay and the flow meter are. It can be in a separate space. It just has to get connectivity to those devices. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that's it for, for ease of installation. A lot of times in the, in the fraternity houses, everything is kind of clustered in the, in the same area around mm -hmm. wherever the main line comes in. Mm -hmm. If that makes sense. Do you sense. ever, do you ever recommend customers install UPSs for their systems in case of, uh, case of a power outage? We do with a lot of our, um, our commercial applications. What we do is we will, we will uh, recommend that they do a, a battery backup. Um, they're fairly cheap. Um, we don't sell them, but we have recommended. I, I just had a big job in North Hills, New York, and believe it or not, they ordered them off an a, off of Amazon, and I think they paid about mm -hmm. thirty five dollars a piece. And mm -hmm. it's just a it's a nice thing to have because you know it 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 does back the system up in case you have a power outage. Um, and the the system does have a battery backup, but it's not unlimited. Um, and that their big thing, the reason why they wanted it, John, honestly, is because they had frequent power surges. So they, they wanted to make sure that when that power surged, that everything didn't go offline and everything was blinking. And then all of a sudden they're waiting for everything to come back online. 
Right, so, right. So that that was the reason uh, for that. So, but yes, right. it, and, that is that is something that's very doable. Gotcha, gotcha. And I would add to that, I'm an IT guy. Okay, so there you go. I I I, I, I kind of think in terms of these things. Sure. I would add to anybody considering a UPS to make sure that your network infrastructure is on a UPS as well. Because if your network is down and this thing is talking, the information is not going anywhere. Right, right. So the, the whole point, stream John. needs to be on the UPS. Yeah, good point, John. Um, a couple of pieces of information for the, the house corporations that they may or may not know. Um, our insured, Holmes Murphy, uh, provides an incentive program for people to purchase this unit. Um, my understanding is, is they offer a 5% premium discount for five years. It may be four years. It may have changed to four years recently. I, I have to double check that. Um, but I can tell you with the premiums that we pay at Ohio, um, this, the premium discount pays for the equipment and installation right. uh, during that time period. So it's, it's one of those things that's well worth it. I'll also tell you from personal experience, we've had two, um, two floods in the last two years. And both of those floods, the cost of those floods far exceeded the cost um, that, that we would have incurred had we installed uh, this technology. The last thing that I'll say, because I've heard from all the experts to never use the pucks, which are their remote electronic devices that the guys like to use with hockey sticks. I would suggest, because of our experience at Ohio, the leaks that we had, we had one under the ice machine. That would be a good place to put one if you're thinking about these devices. Another place where we had a leak was in the preheater on our commercial dishwasher. Um, so in your kitchen area, if you have a commercial kitchen, you might want to consider putting a puck in there. It's out of the way. It'll never be seen, and it's likely to be tampered with. And then the, the, the last place that I might suggest it is if you have a laundry room, um, to put it in um, in the laundry room somewhere if it can be put in a place that's inconspicuous. Um, my two cents on. on yeah, that. and and John, can I expand on that? You sure can. I mean, as as a company, we recommend that you put a water and temperature device at every water appliance. That's not always a, a consideration because of budgetary reasons and also for practical reasons, but. I agree with you 100% out of sight, out of mind. That's the best place a sensor can go when you don't see it and you don't have people walk around. But everybody needs to understand our sensors do not find water. Water has to find the sensor. So if you have one, like you said, underneath an ice machine and there's a sink adjacent to it that is across the room, uh, if you have a leak at that sink, obviously the water's got to get enough flow and be flowing in the proper direction to find that sensor that's underneath the ice machine. So I always want to want to clarify that, that the sensors don't find water, the water finds the sensors. Okay. So, but that's the, that's the key to the flow meter um, is that it's going to detect that abnormal flow of water. If you do have a leak and it's going to shut your system down. So, gotcha. but, um, and, and the last point you talked about it, and, but it may not be intuitive for some folks. The system is experiential. So it's going to analyze your water flow. Um, and it's going to determine based on the calculations that it does, what normal and abnormal water flow is for your particular building. And it's going to be based, like Roger said, on different times of the year. Summer is going to be different than fall and, and winter um, because the house is, is barely occupied in, in the summertime and, and on breaks and things like that. So it takes a few weeks for the system to kind of learn the environment, if you will. Um, and there's probably going to be ongoing tweaking to some extent um, with, with, with the system. Because one year you might have 50 guys in your house. I hope you're that lucky. And next year you may have 25. And, and those are different water usage levels. And you may need to make adjustments and just, just need to be aware of, of, of that kind of situation if you install one of these devices. Um, yeah, and, and special events, John, when you're having special events at the house and you have more people in the house, obviously your water usage is going to be higher than right. it would on a, on a Monday through Friday basis. So right. those are considerations that you'd have to take if you were managing the system. Right, right. And, and one yeah. other thing, John, I wanted to point out, if, if a house decided to go with the basic, what we were talking about, the basic 
uh, the hub, the flow meter, and the valve and the relay. It's you can add to the system uh, at a later date if you wanted to add sensors. Okay, just remember the residential hub. You're you're allowed to have two zones and twenty devices for for the one hub. So you could you could add up to that twenty, and and then you you'd be in great shape. Wonderful. Well, now that I've asked all my questions, um, <laughs> does anybody else have questions to ask? Well, John, I guess you and I are good, huh? Oh. Uh, we're not, Roger, we're not seeing any questions. Okay. Uh, well, John, I, I, would, I would like to close by telling you we have all kind of information for you. We have spec sheets on our products. We have um, presentations. The, the, the one that I sent you was a PowerPoint presentation. We also have, uh, I can send an attachment uh, that's not a PowerPoint. So it would be more like a deck, a sales deck or an information deck. I'll be more than happy to, um, uh oh, looks like you got a question. Oh, the question was, is there a monthly fee? Oh, great question. Great question. Uh, there, there is a monthly fee once you exceed X number of devices, okay? And on, on the Pipeburst Pro 4 system, that is going to, once you exceed that 20 um, and you go to the commercial, then it's going, going to be, it's very nominal fee. It's about $200 a year to monitor. And all that is, is a, it's, a, it's a monitoring fee uh, for the platform of Ion Leaks. That's what the charge is for. That's all it is, is to keep that dashboard up and running. So to, to, uh, around $200 a week, uh, a month, not, I mean, a year, I'm sorry, I'm stumbling here. $200 a year, not to exceed that because you would never exceed that on, on the number of devices. Gotcha. The, the yes. other thing I forgot to mention about the uh, insurance discount is there's uh -huh. actually a form that you need to complete. Actually, I think both Pipe First Pro and us need, and we need to complete so that you get that credit uh, from Holmes Murphy. So just be aware of that, that 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 paperwork has to be completed in order for you to get that credit. Yeah, and we're more than happy to assist with that. Um, my colleague, Bob Hearn, has a lot of experience with Holmes Murphy and Chubb and a lot of the insurance carriers across the country. So he he's very well versed on providing those information and what they're looking for uh, to make sure that you can get that in when you do your your renewal on your insurance. Great. Are there any other questions? Roger, this has been great. Thank you well, for your time. You guys John, have a great product. I hope we get to uh, to leverage the, the the use of your product across our fraternity well, houses. Well, we would love to partner with you. Um, we do have experience with fraternity houses. Um, I talk to uh, you know fraternity houses at least two times a week. So we're 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 in that business and we would love to partner with you guys. And John, if there's anything you need or any of the brothers need as far as information, contacting me, questions, please don't hesitate. That's what I do and that's what I'm here for. And 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 for the guys on the call, um, we will post um, not only this webinar, but we'll post all of Roger's contact information and the. Uh, um, other paperwork that he can provide us so that you have the information you need to make informed decisions. And we're both here uh, whenever you need to, if you want to talk further, either privately or if you want to reconnect as a group, uh, we're happy to meet at your convenience to help you through this. Yep. I'll be more than happy to answer any questions. So just send them my way. Very good. Thank you, Roger. Thank okay. you, brothers. Thank you, John. Y'all have a good evening. Take care.